Okay, hey, welcome back to my channel. We are ready for part two of our study in the book of Ruth. Today we are going to be studying Ruth chapter one, verse one. It is just one verse, but I feel like it has a lot for us to take from it. And my book that we are going through says to just do that one verse. Um, so I'm just going to read the verse and then I will go into reading this part that goes with it. It also does have three um, study questions to go with this verse. So I will have those questions in the description box below. If you click on the title of this video, it will bring up the three questions and you can write them in your notebook and answer them for yourself. Um, I will also read them off here at the end. But it says, there are no coincidence, coincidence with our God. Um, Ruth, one, ch Ruth chapter one, verse one says, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a man from Bethlehem in Judah together with his wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Moab. So it's referring to um, Naomi's husband and their two sons went to, were from Bethlehem, but they went to live in the country of Moab. Naomi's husband's name was Elimin. I don't know even how to pronounce that, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm going to read out of this what it has to say about that verse. The book of Ruth opens with, in the days when the judges ruled. And by doing so, it places itself on the timeline, on the timeline of scripture for us. Ruth is a story of redemption from a difficult time in the history of God's people. There was no king, and the people did what was right in their own eyes. As Judges 21-25 reminds us, and if the people were doing what was right in their own eyes, that usually meant that they were not doing what was right. Though God had been ever faithful, the people had been unfaithful. The people of Israel had slipped further and further into disobedience. What had started as complacency had turned into rebellious hearts. Sin is a slippery slope. And once we compromise a little, we soon find it hard to stand. Yet even when things were bad, God was at work. And even when it seemed that all had abandoned the Lord, there were a few who were faithful. We are told that there was a famine in the land, and this famine was likely the result of the people's disobedience. Deuteron Deuteronomy 11 verses 13 through 17 talks about that f famine, if you want to read more about the famine that it's talking about. Bethlehem was known as the house of bread, but this famine meant that there was not any bread in the house of bread. We are introduced to one man of Bethlehem who decided to take his family to greener pastures. The grass seemed greener in Moab, except it was not. Going to Moab meant leaving the promised land and going back into the wilderness from which God's people had been delivered. Moab was a wicked land, and God's people knew that, but it seems this man would follow the path of the people in the time of the judges and do what was right in his own eyes. The text uses the word sojourn for the man's journey to Moab, which implies that he intended to be there temporarily. He intended to be there for a short time and then return to Bethlehem, but he would never return, so often we do the same. We think we can leave the promised land where God has us and return shortly. We think maybe we know what is best for our lives. We think that maybe God's ways are not the best ways, but they always are. Yet even still, God was providentially working. Sinclair Ferguson reminds us that even the town was significant when he said, it is not insignificant that all this takes place when there was no king in Israel. Judges 21-25. Yet in the very town where Je where Israel's greatest king would later be reared, 1 Samuel 16, 1, and where the kings of kings would be born, Micah 5, 2, and Matthew 2, 1. There are no coincidences with our God. He is working even when we do not understand. 
and he can transform our greatest mistakes into the greatest of miracles. He is the faithful God. So in this chapter, we see, or in this specific verse, we see that they are leaving the promised land and going to Moab, which it talks about Moab was a very wicked city. And so it almost seems like they were, in a sense, leaving God and going to something that looked like it was going to be greener pastures for them. And it turned out to not be that. Um, it says, he is working even when we do not understand and he can transform our greatest mistakes into the greatest of miracles. So I guess that is just what I got out of that is um, sometimes it can, like, things can look better than they are. And sometimes we want to go against God's plan for us because we think we know what is better for us than God does. And it's just a reminder for me to trust God for where he has me in life. Trust him um, to lead me where he wants me to go in life. And yeah, it's not always greener pastures on the other side or in another place, even when it may look like that. Um, so yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this specific verse or what you got out of it. Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear. I'm going to read off the three questions here that go with this um, verse here. And then, like I said, I'll also have it in the description box if um, you don't want to try and copy it off from me reading it. The first question is, in what ways are we tempted to do things our own way instead of trusting the Lord? I'm gonna read that again. In what ways are we tempted to do things our own way instead of trusting the Lord? Question number two, what is the way that you have seen God bring good from a bad decision or situation in your life? What is a way that you have seen God bring good from a bad decision or situation in your life? For me, that question, just the first thing that I think of, um, is something that I have really never shared about. And I don't know if I ever will go into detail, but I did some things as a teenager that I am not proud of at all. Um, but God taught me a lot of lessons through those years. And even though like if I could go back, I would want to redo some things that I did. It, yeah, just taught me a lot. And I really did some growing up in those years. Um, question number three, what situation in your life can you trust God to bring good from right now? What situation in your life can you trust God to bring good from right now? I just challenge you to take time to really dive deep and really think about these questions and answer them for yourself. Um, you don't have to share your answers for these questions, but it just helps to kind of, yeah, think about it in a deeper sense, I guess. That is all that we have for verse or chapter one, verse one. Like I said, please let me know what your thoughts are on this or what you got out of this in the comments below. And yes, thank you for watching. I am really enjoying this study and I will see you in the next one.